Our firm represents many men and women who are charged with domestic assault. And, you know, a fairly common situation that's occurred and, and a person comes to our office, the husband or the wife, and they say, Mike, uh, I would like to retain you to represent me in this domestic assault. My husband's also been charged because the police had a hard time sorting out who was the aggressor, so they charged both. Can you also represent my husband? Because we want to work things out and get these charges dropped. We, we, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about getting back together, even though we're not supposed to talk to our, to our bail conditions. And I said, no, that's a very, probably a, one of the clearest examples of a conflict of interest. I can only represent your interest. I can't represent your husband because he's charged with assaulting you. You're charged with assaulting him. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to help your husband. Who am I helping in that situation? I, I can really help neither. It doesn't work out that way. So that's a, that's a clear example of a conflict of interest. I can, you can retain me, the, the wife or the husband as the case may be, and your husband has to go get another uh, lawyer. Now a common situation, I, I've seen this happen, perhaps an inexperienced lawyer that meets with both couples or gives advice to both couples, They're, that lawyer is also already in a conflict and they shouldn't represent either. So we're very careful that way. If the wife or husband calls us first, that's the person we can represent and, and, and no other. So that's the very, a, a common situation in criminal law and that's how it should be handled. They both should have their own independent lawyer representing their best interests.